Hi guys, welcome to the daily vlog and today the daily vlog is going to take a slight twist because I am finally starting the make your first film series. It has to be a series because making a film is not something that you can do within a 20 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute video. Uh, so I have to make a series and I thought about it for a while and I kept putting it off but finally decided this is what I did with daily vlog as well. I tried to make things too perfect, too close to professional and that delayed my videos. So with daily vlog, I am more casual, more cavalier in my attitude. And I'm going to do the same thing with this video as well. So if you can see my camera here, if you can see other things here, that's perfectly fine. Because what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to share with you is more important than trying to, trying to make it more professional and like a masterpiece of visual storytelling. It's not going to be. Uh, but what I'm going to tell you is going to be valuable. It is going to help you make your first film if that is something you want to do. So basically this series is going to be geared towards people who want to make a film or who want to make a video. Uh, it doesn't have to be actually a film in the film sense but we will take it as a film and they don't know where to start. They are very overwhelmed by this uh, by the whole prospect because Making a film is kind of a complex business, but it doesn't have to be a scary business. So we will kind of take it piece by piece and demystify it and make it more accessible to uh, everybody who is afraid of it at the moment. And the reason that I put um, it as a series is because I can take that in a small parts and then each video would have some useful information and it would have some action items. So you kind of like, homework so you can watch the video and then go off and take some action based on that so that you are ready for the next video so i would suggest that you start your project right after watching this video and then you take it step by step with me as you keep watching each video how long these are going to be i don't know how long the series is going to be i don't know because i am going to focus on the content and that's something i'm going to uh, advise you as well that instead of saying I'm going to make a five minute film or I'm going to make a 10 minute film. Think about what's the story that you want to tell and how long that story should be as a canvas, how long, how big that project should be and decide based on that. So with these, as I said, I'm not going to focus on the duration. I'm going to focus more on uh, what is the information that I'm sharing. If that is good enough for you to go and then do the next step, then that's good enough. That's the place for me to cut and then we will go through the whole process together okay let's talk about the osmo pocket in the title the reason i put osmo pocket in the title is because uh, i quite like this camera it is a very small camera as you can see this is like a small light camera uh, and uh, because this is small and light i can put it anywhere so right now this is doing a backup uh, footage for me usually i do that from the top of the camera so it can keep the focus on me it can keep me in frame the whole time and if i for any reason if i lose the whole footage from the dslr i've got this backup to use it in that case the eye angle might be different but the information would be there and i can still use it so because it's very small and light i can do something like put it on this which is just a, like a magnet with foam and I can attach it to the top of the fridge or to a railing somewhere or an iron gate, things like that. Or um, I can use it with some accessories with a, a gorilla pod or I can have it on a, a long selfie stick and use some, uh, use it for some movement shots for some shots that I cannot do with the DSLR or even with light mirrorless camera that I've got. Uh, so that's why I put Osmo Pocket, if I connect it to the phone, uh, then I can actually move the camera. I can connect the DSLR also to the phone, uh, but I can only use that for monitoring. I can use it for changing the settings. Osmo Pocket, I can actually move the camera. I can do pan shots and tilt shots and things like that. Uh, and also it has some extra features like, you know, the follow mode. So where it can keep you in frame or where it can keep something that you tell it to track and can keep tracking that. So that sort of thing Osmo Pocket can do, which other cameras cannot do. That's the reason why I'm going to use this because I am going to do what you are going to do. You're going to create a project, you're going to create a film by yourself, and I'm going to create a film by myself and show you each step. 
So for that kind of purpose, the Osmo Pocket is very valuable because it helps you do something single-handedly. Otherwise, if you, so if you have an Osmo Pocket or if you're planning to buy one, fantastic. These videos will be really, really useful to you because you can do exactly the same things that I am doing. But if you don't have an Osmo Pocket, you don't want to buy one, you don't have the budget for one, then don't worry. Take your uh, DSLR out, your mirrorless, or your bridge camera, or your uh, digital camera point and click, or even your mobile phone. So use whatever you have. It's not the tool that does things. This is something that annoys my nephew quite a lot when I tell him, it's not the camera that takes the picture, it's the photographer that takes the picture. So I'll give you an example. For example, uh, my friend Anna, she doesn't have a DSLR and I have a DSLR. And she bought a point and click also at a much later stage. Before that, she used to do photography with her uh, uh, mobile phone. And she and I could be standing side by side looking at the same scene and she will come away with a better picture than me with a better camera. Because it's the eyes, it's the, it's the view, it's the perspective uh, that counts. So if you want to tell a story, the same thing happens with the filmmaking as well. If you want to tell a story, you can use any tool at your disposal. So whatever camera you have, use that. But just be serious in your project. Follow the process as closely as you can. So be, be the kind of person who can do the planning as well and not just take the camera and point it at something. And you know, it's not going to be the kind of video where you, uh, somebody's doing a skateboard jump and you take the mobile out and take the clip. Uh, it's going to be much more serious than that. But it's also not going to be like a multi-million dollar uh, Hollywood production as well. So we'll try to find a middle ground somewhere where we can make a small film, maybe uh, one minute, two minute kind of film. And it's simple enough that we can focus on the process, we can focus on the planning, and we can do everything in the way that big filmmaking teams do. We obviously won't do everything like that because we don't want to bog ourselves down with so many processes that we can't actually make the film and it takes months to finish it. We will try to do something which can be done in a few weeks. So each time you see the video, you can go and do something more on that project. That's the basic idea, that's the basic plan. And as for uh, schedule, I am not going to put it on a strict schedule, but I will put these videos out uh, every few days. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that if I make it something like it's going to be every Sunday that you will check every Sunday, I'm going to make it every few days so that you check more often. And in that way, you will get introduced to my daily vlog as well. See, this is the trap. Uh, but other than that, these videos will, I'll try to keep them as regular as possible. And then we'll go from, uh, from the beginning uh, right to the point where you have something that you can share on YouTube, on Facebook uh, with your friends or with the audience uh, that has a story and that looks like a kind of a film. Small, but kind of a film. So uh, with that in mind, let's talk about the basic steps. Let's talk about the basic phases of a project, of a film project. So film project starts with pre-production. These are all the things that you do before you pick up the camera. And in production, all those things where you have the camera on and then you do things on the set, take pictures, take recordings, and then I record sound and come away with something what we call in the can. So that is your, everything is recorded. And then from there, you have the task, which is called post-production, where we edit the film, where we cut all the pieces together, synchronize the sound, put some video effects, put some uh, text on there if we need to, add some end credits, and then goes to distribution, where we decide how we're going to share this. So it's not going to play in the cinemas. This project is going to be a small project, but it can definitely go on YouTube. It can definitely go on Facebook. So uh, that's, the, that's the kind of scope that we are going to shoot for, okay? So that was, all of that is just background, but it's also very important because now you know what we're doing and you know whether it's right for you or not. I hope it's right for you. Uh, so let's start with this. And the first thing that we need to do is come up with a story. And for this one, I want to come up with a very simple story so that I can shoot it myself. Uh, I can shoot it just alone without anybody else needed to hold the camera or do any panning shots or anything like that. 
uh, with the Osmo Pocket, it will give me some benefit, but I will try to keep it as simple that anybody can do it with whatever camera they are using. So, um, what kind of story should we have? I would say if you have a story that you have in mind and that's your burning desire to uh, create, that's why you are learning this filmmaking, I would say don't use it for this one. Because the first project is never the perfect project, it's never a great project, this is, this is for you for learning. I made that mistake, I took a really good story that I had and I made that as my first project and it was a mess. So take something simple that is, it doesn't have to be amazing, it doesn't have, I'll give you some example that will explain it much better. So um, I have only the house, I have only myself, so I'm going to be on camera and I'm going to be operating the camera as well. And I have whatever the props I have available in the house. Uh, before that, a uh, little while ago, I had an, another spare bedroom as well, so I could use that for filming because, you know, uh, not a lot of chaos like it's in my normal bedroom. There's lots of, lots of crap lying around, so I can use that. So it could be a simple story. For example, story one. One guy, uh, he's, uh, he's sleeping in his bed, the alarm goes off, he gets up, walks out of the house and then picks up the newspaper. And as he's picking up the newspaper, he sees something that he thinks like, oh, did they already debate that? I thought that was going to happen this afternoon. So that's it. This is the story. And because this is such a small, it's not even a story, it's not even a film, it's a scene. So you can shoot that scene, you can finish that, you can have this uh, properly uploaded uh, within a couple of weeks. Because the way we will do it, we will do it with proper process, it will be good quality and then it will take a couple of weeks to do this. Um, it could have, we could have another scene that we can add on to that or we can have that as a separate scene. For example, uh, the same guy sitting in uh, sitting on the sofa and then he's reading the newspaper and then he comes across an obituary and then as he starts reading it he's saying like this guy seems very similar to me and then he reads more of it whoa this is me and then he suddenly like he gets shocked and he turns the page over and then he realizes that the date on the paper is wrong it's tomorrow's newspaper da 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 Psychological thriller, and I hate psychological thrillers because when I, when I do my film group meetings, um, if you ask anybody what kind of film you want to make, everybody says, oh, I want to make a psychological thriller. Everybody. So I get kind of sick of that. But you have to admit, the psychological thrillers are good if you direct them well. They can have a good impact, but also they can be done without too many props or too many stunts or too many duplicate people needed or anything like that. So you could have something like that. I don't have a resolution in mind for this as to why is this tomorrow's newspaper and all that, but it is something uh, that you can create as a scene. And if you do it well enough, then you can upload it and then people will see that like, yeah, that's like a film. So, but... As I said, I don't have that bedroom now, so I want to do something that can be done in the kitchen or in the living room. So, for example, um, if I'm reading the newspaper, that one can be shot in here. Or if I want to do something here. This is, these are just examples which spark your creativity to make you think in terms of uh, a small, simple story. So, for example, if I've got the chair, I've got the table, and I'm sitting here, and I'm a teacher. So, I am uh, checking some papers and suddenly I come across an exam paper and I start reading it and laughing and and I start um, and I call out to somebody who's there well somebody doesn't have to be there we can always cheat we do cheat a lot in filmmaking so I can call out to somebody like oh listen to this Jen isn't this what this girl has written so, and then we show that on the screen as in what somebody has written that, uh, Dear Examiner, I am a, a young girl who is in love with a guy and my father says he will not let me marry that guy if I fail my exam. So please think of me as your own daughter and uh, just give me passing marks. That's it, that becomes a story. So it's simple enough, it needs very few props uh, that you can easily gather and then you can have it. 
You can use any of these ideas by the way. If you want to use any of these ideas, feel free. Just give me a special thanks to Sunny Goswami in your hand credits when we get to that. Uh, but then um, I came up with another idea as well. So for example, I've got a guitar. I've got a couple of guitars. So let's say I am the guy who's sitting on the sofa and just playing guitar and singing. And I'm doing a horrible job of singing. And somebody who lives upstairs, who he... Um, slams on the floor or my roof, my ceiling. And, and I just like, come on, shut up, you suck. So I scream at the ceiling. So that's the scene. And uh, I kind of like that scene. So I think I will go with that one and um, try to create that project. If you want to do the same one, feel free. Um, there's no, uh, no problem. We can't do both. We can do both. So um, let's carry on with the Next step, once you have a story in mind, you can have any story in mind. You can use your pets, you can use your kids, you can use yourself, whatever you have available, write a story based on that. Keep it simple and self-contained. That's the only thing. So once you have the story, what's the next step? The next step is you need to write that story down. Yes, it might be so simple that it seems stupid to write it down. But as I said, the process, the planning is more important to get you introduced to these steps rather than having that piece of paper in our hand which has a story you remember the whole story it's just like five lines but it's more important to get into the habit of writing the story in a way that you would write if you have a bigger project where you are going to be working with other people so in order to communicate that story to other people you write what we call the script so the script would have more things in it and here I'm going to bring this into view so that you can see an example of a script that I wrote uh, for one of my projects and so in the, in the top line which is called a slug line we write uh, where the scene is taking place and what time of day it is and these uh, punctuation marks the hyphen and the colon and full stop everything uh, is indicative of something so we use that specific format and then we write dialogues then we write the name in the middle and then we use a certain font so this is a specific format that Hollywood uses that all over film industries use all over the world and the reason for that is because it's a standard format everybody is familiar with it and it's easy for people to read so actors can go and highlight their lines, the ones they're going to read on camera. So it becomes easier for them to just pay attention to those lines. Um, if the set designer is there, then they can pay attention to uh, what's the location, how many locations we have. And if there is somebody who's called director of photography who takes care of uh, the color on the screen or the lighting and matching the cameras and things like that, so they can look at as to what time of day we are shooting. And if you have a producer, then they will take care of how many locations we have, what time you have to shoot and things like that. So this script would have all those details which different members of the team would pay attention to. And then it becomes easier for them to understand and then everybody can share the same script. The light is changing, so it's going to make my face completely white. Uh, which is why I'm depending on the Osmo Pocket that will control the lighting on its own. Uh, so, uh, let me just double check. I'm just checking the focus. I can't check the focus while it's recording, so leave it. Okay. So once you have the script, uh, then you know exactly where you are going to be at what time of day and what are the things that you need to do and what are the lines that the actors are going to speak. In this case, everything out of that is you. You are going to be speaking the lines, you are going to have to arrange the set, you are going to have the props. So for example, my prop, guitar, I have a guitar. So I know that I have a guitar. If I didn't, I would have to find somebody in my team who had a guitar if we were working on a bigger project. Right. So I think I've gone on enough about the script. So this is important to write the script and this is important to write the script in the same format. I think this format has been around for maybe like a hundred years or so, but um, because you can see there is more, uh, more comfortable for typewriter. It's more a typewriter kind of 
format rather than a computer because there are no hyperlinks there are no too much formatting in there just simple formatting that you can do on a typewriter but that is what is used so that's what we will use in this project as well something i was going to say about the script and now it's completely uh, yes so how do you create that format there are multiple ways of creating that format the one idea is to as long as you know what format it should be, what each line should be formatted as, then you can do that yourself in Microsoft Word or anything else. But if you don't want to do that, there are uh, Microsoft Word templates. I will, um, I have one, but I can't, I can't share that in the video. So I'll have to find where I got that from because I downloaded it from somewhere and I'll put that link in the description. So you can download that and that has Microsoft Word styles and you can use those styles to easily format your script. Um, after you have written it or you can just format as you go along as well it depends how you how you like to work everybody has a different style of working um, so that is one thing and then there are some uh, templates where they have macro there are some tools as well which can do the formatting for you so many ways of doing the same thing these days because of the online tools but i would say stick to something simple just have some styles in microsoft word based on the formatting that is required for each uh, for the slug line for the dialogue for the actress name things like that and then just as you go along just format them and you can actually assign uh, these things to the styles to shortcut keys in word so i just do like that so for example there's a character who is going to speak so i just highlight that press ctrl shift c and that will highlight that as the character so the correct font and style and um, align that in the middle of the page okay the next thing we need to talk about from the script and i'm going to talk about this now so that you have that ready next time we meet and in the next video we can go into production so the next thing that we need is a shooting script so what's a shooting script the shooting script is the translation of the script into physical terms. So as I say, a director has a big team. We have lots of people who help us to execute the project. But there are two things that a director cannot uh, delegate to somebody else. And those two th things are, one, the vision that you have in your head, how you imagine the scene to be, Converting that into the real life. Converting that into this chair is going to be here, the people are going to sit here, somebody's going to pass this way and the camera is looking this way or we reveal something this way. Those things, only a director has to have that and they have to translate that and tell the team as to how it's going to work. And the second thing is getting the performance out of the actors. Whether that performance was perfect or whether that was that needed slightly more emotion, slightly less emotion, uh, let's not fumble next time, something like that. That's why we do retakes. So when the performance is not good or something happens on the set, then we do that. Sometimes the actors can have an input into that as well. Like, can I, can I do it one more time? I'm, I'm not happy with that. So we'll say like, okay, go ahead. So if we have time, then we try to do that. Um, so that those are the two things that the director has to do himself or herself. Nobody else can do that for them. So shooting script is the way of communicating that vision to other people. So let me show you this as well. This is one of the shooting script for a project that I've done in the past. I try to create shooting script for every single project, even if it's just going to be a simple two minute film, I try to get a shooting script with that because it is the way I will tell my team what is going to happen on the set, where the cameras are going to be, what each camera is going to see. In this project, we will do only one camera, but as you can see in this one, this has multiple cameras. So in each shot, what each camera is going to see, where they're going to be placed, you have to, uh, you have to know that and you have to tell the team and this is the way we do it by using a shooting script. So the, the columns in the shooting script are pretty self-explanatory, I think, um, other than some of these uh, shorthand, some of these abbreviations. So for example, WS means wide shot, uh, MS means mid shot, or CU means close up. 
So things like that, which are shortcuts so that we don't take too much space in there. Uh, and for example, if I'm doing like this kind of setup, which is a very simple setup, if I've got two cameras, I could be doing something like one camera there, which is doing a wide shot and one camera, which is doing a mid shot or a close up shot very close to me. Uh, or I could do an extreme close up uh, and depends on the scene. It depends on what emotion you want to convey in that scene. And based on that, you place your cameras. So we went through all this scope. What we are going to do, we went through a uh, kind of story we were looking for for this simple project. Uh, we went through the script and the formatting for the script and why that is needed. And then we went through uh, what a shooting script is and why we you need to create one even for this simple project. I think that's enough of me jabbering in this video. Uh, and it, I think it is very clear what you need to do now. You need to create a story. You need to think of a very, very simple story or take one of the examples that I've talked about here in this video and then write that in the proper script format and then create a shooting script for that. And then when you come to the next video, which will be in another four or five days, uh, maybe three days, keep coming back and check my daily vlog while you're coming back. Uh, so when you come to the next video, you will have those things ready as your homework done. And then we will start talking about the cameras and how to place the cameras for that particular project, the project that I'm going to do with the guitar thing. Um, and then we will carry you on from there. Each, each uh, video will take it further. So if you have any questions up to this point, please feel free to leave them in the comment and I'll try to respond to each and every comment. Uh, and then uh, we'll try and work together on this project and try to create something uh, then we can finally upload and then say like, yep, yeah, that's my first film. Right. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this project, uh, this uh, whole series with me and just keep coming back and we'll keep working on this idea. Uh, thank you for today and then uh, I'll see you next time. I'll see you tomorrow actually. I'm going, uh, you're going to check my daily vlog, aren't you? So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.